Welcome to Cybersecurity Awareness TV. Join me, Professor Mac Jackson Jr., as we navigate through the digital landscape. Gear up for a thrilling ride through the information technology of cybersecurity tips, news, and gain expert knowledge to protect yourself and your family from the fastest growing crimes of the 21st century. Remember, folks, to subscribe and like this video and let the internet know that we are here to protect you from the definitely cyber crimes. You can find more about my company by going to my website at vandersoncybergroup.com or at macjacksonjr.com for more information. Folks, this week we are talking about what is going on in the U.S. House of Representatives. Folks, this week the House of U.S. Representatives decided to pass a bill to ban TikTok. We will talk about that and discuss it. Also, we'll continue our discussion of TikTok and how this bill will affect users using TikTok in our second segment. But first, folks, <clears throat> in the era of digital globalization and the scrutiny of social media platforms, particularly those that tie the nation's considerations concerning our adversaries, right? This involves TikTok as an emerging, one of the fastest growing so social engineering applications used by the public here in the United States. Folks, this application of TikTok is merging as the focus of the U.S. government as a security risk. And this is because of the software itself has been deemed to, to be a surveillance data exploration and uh, being able to predict and identify people of the United States and send information to them. And this is something that our U.S. government is concerned with. And we, of course, as citizens, don't definitely do not like it. So our government is looking to take apprehensive um, plans to avoid that happening for us, right? So I have a story to share with you coming to us from PDF News Clips. Check this out. The government is now looking to ban TikTok for like the fifth time, but here's the deal. This time it is probably for real. All thanks to this new bipartisan bill called the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. And it would create a process for the president to identify certain social media applications that are under the control of foreign adversaries. And then once an app is determined to be a risk, it would be banned from app stores and web hosting services unless it severed ties with its parent company in the next 180 days. So essentially, TikTok would need to sell itself to another company or break away entirely from ByteDance. Otherwise, they would be banned. One of the sponsors of this bill, Mike Gallagher, saying, this is my message to TikTok. Break up with the Chinese Communist Party or lose access to your American users. America's foremost adversary has no business controlling a dominant media platform in the United States. It's expected to make its way out of the Energy and Commerce Committee today and be sent to the House floor for a future vote. And very notably, it got a very powerful endorsement the White House, with them telling reporters we would want to see this bill get done so it can get to the president's desk. Though adding, they don't see this as a ban on TikTok. Instead, saying that this is about making sure that companies aren't owned by countries that want to do us harm. Right? And this is Congress's worry that the Chinese government could use TikTok to access Americans' personal data as well as show them videos that could influence their views on various issues. And with all this, you have TikTok not taking this lightly. Though just a quick sidebar before we get to TikTok's response, TikTok is technically lying when they call this bill an outright ban. Right? As was mentioned, they can avoid a ban by selling. But this, as we've seen TikTok go on the offensive by quote tweeting several U.S. officials and saying, this bill is an outright ban of TikTok no matter how much the authors try to disguise it. This legislation will trample the First Amendment rights of 170 million Americans and deprive 5 million small businesses of a platform they rely on to grow and create jobs. And today, they actually sent a notification to their users telling them, Congress is planning a total ban of TikTok. Speak up now before your government strips 170 million Americans of their constitutional right to free expression, with then directing users to put in their zip code and then it has them call their representatives. Or so you have TikTok rallying their users. It's creating havoc on Capitol Hill. Congressional offices being bombarded with calls from users and one House GOP staff are telling Politico, it's so, so bad. Our phones have not stopped ringing. There are teenagers and old people saying they spend their whole day on the app and we can't take it away. With some staffers saying they're easily going to get over a thousand calls today and that some users are being rude, using vulgar names. Which I also just, I want to note here, the people who are answering phones at your congressional offices, they are not your Congress people. They are the courier. They are the scribe. You're yelling at the cashier about the prices. Right? Understand 
understand. These people are writing down your concerns so your representative can read them. There is no reason to be absolutely brutal to these working class people. Like, yes, you are free to express your frustrations. Just understand who you're actually talking to here. That said, with this whole situation, we saw Mike Gallagher hitting back at TikTok's message, saying if you actually read the bill, it's not a ban, it's a divesture, and adding that the bill puts the decision squarely in the hands of TikTok to sever their relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. With that, adding that if they do, they'll survive. And what's also interesting is TikTok's move today may have actually backfired because one well-connected Republican actually told Politico that this is, quote, incensing members who are on the fence and are now leaning towards voting for Gallagher's bill. And also a Democratic senior staffer saying it seems to be backfiring with Democratic members as well. With what seems to be an increasing number of people saying what TikTok did here, it feels like a, a CCP bullying tactic. And if these sources are telling it like it is, they may actually be accelerating their departure either from ByteDance or the United States. But as far as how this is actually going to play out, we're going to have to wait and see. Though again, the bill right now does have widespread support across Congress and it has the support of the White House. And actually, just last second update as we were uploading today's show, the bill just passed the House Energy and Commerce Committee with a 50 to 0 unanimous vote. So it appears that TikTok's tactics, they either didn't work or they completely backfired. We now have Steve Scalise saying he's putting the bill on the floor soon. Folks, applications like TikTok's owned by entities outside the United States, especially those which links to countries with global political interests, particularly the ones that are adversaries. As a result of this sort of uh, invasion of our privacy and of users, personal information and be able to collect data of your locations, where you're at. This information can be used to monitor, uh, influence individual, raising alarms to all of Americans about our personal information and how to protect us from these type of national threats. To continue the story, I'd like to take a look at a news clip I found from ABC News. A social media giant under attack in Washington. The House set to vote this week on a bill designed to force TikTok's Chinese parent company to sell off its stake or face a possible ban here in the U.S. ABC's Ike Jachi joins us live on Capitol Hill, where that bill is gaining momentum. Ike, good morning. Good morning, Janae. Lawmakers are citing national security concerns for the reason behind the proposed ban, all while TikTok denies claims that the Chinese government could access user data. Did you wake up with this message on TikTok today? This morning, the viral video app TikTok is on the verge of a nationwide ban. I do know people and have friends on that platform who are in fear because that is their entire livelihood. A House committee unanimously approving legislation earlier this week requiring ByteDance, the app's Chinese parent company, to sever ties with TikTok within six months or risk getting blocked on app stores and websites in the U.S. President Biden reiterating his support for the bill despite his campaign launching a new TikTok account. If they pass it, I'll sign it. Former President Trump reacting on social media, opposing the ban on TikTok, claiming it will help Meta's business, writing, I don't want Facebook doing better. The app used by around 170 million Americans sending this push notification to users, asking them to stop a TikTok shutdown and call their representatives. We simply cannot allow an app controlled by our nation's foremost adversary and competitor to take over the American media landscape. Lawmakers from both parties have long expressed concerns that Chinese authorities could force ByteDance to hand over data from its millions of users. A TikTok spokesperson releasing this statement, blasting the legislation, saying this will damage millions of businesses, deny artists an audience, and destroy the livelihoods of countless creators across the country. Now, it's important to note, even if the ban happens, experts say users would still have access to the platform using virtual private networks that skirt those proposed legislations. Gio? So many talking about this. All right, Ike, thank you so much. And folks, from these clips you can see that this is definitely an interest that we all should be concerned with. Furthermore, the platform's algorithms, right, um, which are dedicated to flow information in the shapes of narratives about millions of consumers that can be manipulated, right? change public opinion and as i've always talked to my students about this can this information can be used as a weaponization for misinformation right to create discord and create a problems that can undermine our democratic process given the multifaceted risk and the call for stringent regulations oversight or outright ban of TikTok. It has driven our U.S. representatives and our national security to be on alarm and discuss ways that they can protect our data from these types of threats. Folks, like we've always said and stated here on our show, Cybersecurity Awareness TV, 
criminals are always looking for ways to exploit our information, especially those here in the U.S. If it's our adversaries or if it's here domestically as well, we must stay vigilant and protect our information from these types of cyber threats, folks. Definitely stay attuned to what's going on and just be, have an open mind before you decide to either get rid of TikTok or look at other apps that are doing the same thing. We'll be back, folks, here at Cybersecurity Awareness TV after these messages. Hi, folks. This is Mac Jackson, Jr. from Cybersecurity Awareness TV. I'm here to tell you today about Dr. Aki Akimi from Vegas Direct Primary Care. As health care costs are on the rise, Dr. Akimi takes the time to explain and recommends lifestyle changes to improve your health and your well-being. She is very attentive and knowledgeable, and she listens, folks, to what your needs are and help you get to the health care that you deserve. Dr. Kimi would suggest things like, food is the best medicine, that's what she says. I wanna give praises out to her and thank her for her support here with me as well as the Las Vegas community. Thank you, Dr. Kimi. Hi folks, welcome back to Cybersecurity Awareness TV. I'm your host, Mac Jackson Jr. We're gonna discuss how these changes with TikToks, how does this bill affect you as a user, of this application and our country in general. As we continue our stories on the TikTok ban, social media applications like TikTok that have foreign adversaries controlling and possessing the unexpected security risks to the United States and our national security, these are the apps that we're looking, we being the United States, are looking to watch and monitor. In other words, we wanna make sure that these applications have their servers here in the US base and they're controlled by US companies. And of course, that means that we're, ah, folks, that means that we're also putting our money, our bets that the U.S. companies that will buy these applications will also protect our data as well. And they won't do adversary work to try to go against American citizens. But so, but we still have to be an open mind. Um, it's the devil that we know versus the devil we don't know, as Sir Harris has said. So, folks, we must stay vigilant and watch out for these applications. I have another clip here to show you on the importance of this bill by our U.S. US um, Congress and uh, also going through our Senate for their vote on it as well. Come to us from WWLTV. TikTok, it's one of the most popular social media platforms in the United States, but some lawmakers and critics see the app's Chinese ownership as a national security threat. Ariane Detail with our National Verify team clears up some confusion about how new legislation could impact the app's future. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed. On March 13th, the House passed the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act, a bill that could ban TikTok in the U.S. if parent company ByteDance doesn't sell the app. Using these sources, we're going to fact check a few common questions about the bill. First, TikTok is not officially banned in the U.S. Despite confusion online about the vote, TikTok hasn't been banned yet. The Senate still needs to pass the bill and get the president's signature. The bill's prospects in the Senate are currently unclear, but even if it does become law, the proposal would likely be challenged in the courts by TikTok. Next up, the bill does not only apply to TikTok. According to the authors of the bill, any social media apps that are controlled by foreign adversaries of the U.S. that pose an unacceptable risk to U.S. national security could be banned. Foreign adversaries are defined in Title 10 of the U.S. Code and currently include Russia, Iran, North Korea, and China. The Electronic Frontier Foundation says Chinese instant messaging app WeChat could also be banned under this bill. And finally, this bill would not give the president power to ban any app deemed a national security threat. The bill only allows the president to ban apps that are used for social media, owned or controlled by a foreign adversary, deemed a threat to national security, and have more than 1 million active users. TikTok says it has never shared U.S. user data with Chinese authorities and won't do so if it is asked. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. So folks, in summary, applications that are used on our phones, particularly our phones, folks, in other words, if you want to use TikTok, it's, it's advised to use it on, on a browser where it's not as an app stored on your phone where it can affect other apps on your particular devices. But there are some requirements for this particular ban that Congress is looking at. And they're stating that the app should be a social media app, of course, um, that it is owned by a foreign adversary, it's deemed a national security threat, and it has over millions of active users. And we're looking at TikTok right now, but again, it could be any other app that is created 
in the future or an app that's possibly purchased or bought by a foreign adversary as well that we must be concerned with. The United States has expressed a deep concern, of course, folks, with all these types of social media apps like TikTok and others owned by foreign adversaries um, nationwide or worldwide, um, citing specific nation national security risk. The apprehensive centers of the potential of exploiting these platforms for surveillance, data, harvesting, and spreading influential operations that can be spread to the American public. The crux of this issue lies in the control over the various amount of user data that can power have the power to manipulate the public opinions of American citizens. And that's our major concerns, folks, that this information can be used to weaponize our thoughts and our opinions regarding our democratic process. That's our major concerns. So definitely, folks, stay tuned. Stay up on what's going on here. Contact your congressman if you're for it or against it. But definitely stay in tune of what's going on. But like we've always said, we'll use the old school way. Don't put things out on the internet that you do not wish the public to know about you. Protect your own privacy starts from home, folks. Let your kids know this as well. As we always say, folks, criminals are always looking for ways to exploit us. We gotta remember, folks, stay cyber woke and protect yourself from these types of threats. That's all we have for you this week, folks. This is Mac Jackson for Vanderson Cyber Group. Definitely find out more information about my company by going to my website at macjacksonjr.com. That's macjacksonjr.com. And contact us to protect your business from these types of cyber threats. Until next week, folks, take care.